the Ryman Mall, University of Montana in Missoula, Montana. There's three test options that will determine the fate of this section between Arthur Avenue and the Grizzly Bear statue. All this brick was laid in about 1965. It came from downtown Missoula and been on Higgins for about 50 years. It was laid fairly hastily here and not with um, modern techniques, not with uh, wheelchair users in mind. So test option one is concrete made to look like brick. This is a slab scored and sealed. Test option two is the original brick. That test panel used to look like this. They're laid on their narrow edge, pulled up, cleaned, and laid on the flat edge, which you get more surface area, not as many gaps. It's not as thick though, but these have been laid really well by a local mason two days ago. Came out great. Test option three is the clay brick pulled up, cleaned, put back down, and compared to the original, the original has 26 rows. This has option three, 32 rows, I believe. So they're a little closer together. The mason said he was able to clean them and get them closer so it's a little smoother. So the options as of now is concrete slab, which at MIST we're not, not in favor of having this whole zone between the Lomason Center and Knowles Dorm. We're not a fan or supportive of all this being concrete for environmental reasons, aesthetics, social um, how surfaces feel on our feet psychologically. Um, surfaces impact our health and well-being. And clay has been shown empirically and also emotionally and anecdotally to be a better surface, so to speak. Now should we have them on their wide, flatter face? Or keep them on their narrow face? That's a good question. At MIST, I guess we don't, we haven't sat down and had any focus groups or studies and tried to figure out what is better. Either would be acceptable. Um, a couple comments say this narrow face is more like a, a cobblestone or, and it matches what's been here for 50 years. Several comments have said they like this better. Um, it's got a, still keeps a timeless look there would be less gaps compared to solid surface. Uh, these are set in sand, both this option two and that option three over there. But the mason has informed uh, me, us, some of us that were here just a few minutes ago, that when he was digging these up, uh, he encountered asphalt about seven inches down. So that even brings up the question of whether we can call this a permeable pavement if there's an impermeable layer seven inches down. We'll have to think, think more about that. Also, the sand just today received, um, you can see it's, it's solidifying a little bit. It received um, kind of a grout sealer. So that also furthers the, the discussion about whether this is permeable. But that sealer will keep the sand from blowing out or in the winter when you have a broom or a, a plow or leaf blowers. Although, do we really need to use leaf blowers everywhere? Anyway, there's lots of variables, discussion needed options when it comes to surfacing and right here at the University of Montana there's a project brewing. The cost of the concrete is likely to be 
cheaper than the brick up front, but the life cycle cost, we would uh, argue that would be much better in favor of the clay brick. Now, the initial cost could be about the same if and when volunteers were used to pull the brick up, clean them, and prepare them for the master masons to relay them. Uh, no matter when you're watching this video, no matter what day or year it is, um, you could send an email with your thoughts to barbara.denman at msu.umt.edu. This was completed two days ago on the morning of Thursday, May 1st, and the university gave one and a half days to comment. There will be a decision coming fairly soon as to what to do on this Ryman Mall, whether to concrete the whole thing or to reuse this historic brick and then whether or not it should be flat faced or the narrow face still up in the air. There's also a question some of us have been talking about and debating these concrete dividers. Do we really need those? On one hand they provide a very strong edge, almost the strongest edge you can imagine. On the other hand it might be very aesthetic to remove those and have this be one large, say, um, plaza, which it already is now, but without the concrete edging, it'd be a little more uniform. But the, the main thing is it might be a bit smoother, because anytime you have two different materials butting up against each other, that's, that's a place that you'll have different rates of wear and tear over time. And that's what's going on with this existing is the, while the brick, yes, has bigger gaps and has settled some, but every time, say walking or especially biking and especially wheel wheelchairs, you hit these concrete dividers and it's a do-do, do-do, do-do. So cyclists tend to use the strips. Walkers tend to use the strips, but also many walkers are in the middle. And wheelchair users uh, have a hard time on this existing surface. There is a, another route, there's a sidewalk that goes all the way right up against the building, but our, our main showcase facility, so to speak, this sort of a grand entryway to the university should be accessible for all. Someone, someone else and a few others have suggested that this edge simply gets widened to three feet, which can handle a wheelchair keep the historic brick in the middle and do the same widening of the concrete on this edge. You'd likely have to take these out and set it as one, one slab, one three foot wide slab with expansion joints. It would not as, be as easy as just adding another foot and a half. These are about 18 inches. Uh, one other thing, just thinking about it. I'll have to come back to it. Let's see, concrete, widen. Oh, as far as wheelchair users go, there is some research strongly suggesting, and actually with, with data, that smaller cracks or gaps with pavers, whether they're clay pavers or concrete pavers, is better for wheelchair users, less overall shock and vibration than periodic larger gaps for expansion. A wheelchair wheel hits this and it's more of an, ac uh, an acute shock to a wheelchair or even a cane than here where it's smaller more consistent vibration. Certainly more research needs to be done on that in that regards. The other thing is that even the pattern of how bricks are laid